Uh, homage to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay. So tonight, what I'm trying to do is have an examination, sort of a discussion, a discussion to establish um, why we would say that the um, the right view, the first part of the Eightfold Path, why is it the most important part or the most vital part? Why would they say something in Buddhism such as if you understand right view, that you can actually reach experience Nibbana and become enlightened? Why would they say this? And this is what it says in some places about the, uh, in the Patisambhidamaga, it does say that. And, um, uh, you know, Newton was, is my attendant. She's, she's pointing that out to me that it was there. So I say, how can I say that the, be willing to say that um, right view is uh, something that makes it so that all these pieces are hooked together in the eightfold path. She was, uh, I will say this about the way that Bhante's teaching and the way I'm teaching too is that these all have to be operational and working uh, fully in order for the meditation to develop properly, to be developed to the strongest degree and be stable, be very stable. And so I was trying to, to try to look at it and say, how can we uh, bring it all together and, and uh, see why it's so important. So one of the things I did, one of the things, I took it and I put it uh, harmonious from the right version into the harmonious version. And so when we look at it, we're looking at it as if it is a large chord between the upper octaves and lower octaves, all in harmony together working. And this first part, let's go on the screen here for a minute. The first part on the screen. We say harmonious, uh, I'm gonna put both of them, I think. So we have right view and we're saying, taking this literally and saying right view, whoops, I didn't do that right, did I? <laughs> oh, I did do it right. Okay, I do, I'm okay, right view. Um, we're saying harmonious perspective. So we're saying, when we say perspective, we are implying that we're going to live with a healthy, impersonal, very clear view of what's happening. We're gonna to try to do that. That means that we will look at things to see what is essentially happening and um, this is the view, harmonious perspective is like the impersonal clear view toward life. Um, and that would eliminate the unwholesome. So if we, if we have right view and that the harmonious perspective, and then we say impersonal, Um, impersonal attitude, really. Our attitude is to see things in the most positive light. Attitude, impersonal attitude, positive. Positive light, yeah? Positive light. 
when we first get into any subject, we would look at it in a positive light uh, to eliminate unwholesome negative negative light. So that's the first thing. And what I what I'm looking at, I'm I'm looking at if you do that, if you're living with this harmonious perspective all the time and training your mind and catching your mind from going to the immediate negative or unwholesome attitude and view, you're always going to try to look at things first through the impersonal positive attitude instead, okay, in a positive light, that that would help you, it would assist you. It, so we could say it assists, and that's connection. Uh, the, the, the images, the uh, harmonious image, harmonious images in our mind, keeping harmonious images. in our mind. And these, these are the thoughts you keep in your mind, thoughts arising from experiences, thoughts arising from wholesome or unwholesome situations where you have to make a choice. And first of all, if your perspective, this one up here, if they're harmonious perspective, it will affect the harmonious images support them from hap happening. And so then if, if we have harmonious images in our mind, that will also affect, um, it'll affect right speech rather than speech which is breaking the precepts with gossip and slander and harsh language and stuff like that, it'll, support the idea of right speech and it will um, also support, I'm just gonna put an H, harmonious communication. And remember we said that speech is not the only way that we communicate. So it will help us and support us to put forth communication that is affected by more than speech, body language as well. Communication is um, all body, body language. And speech. Okay. Then if we have that one going, the next one that's happening is right actions. And if you're behaving like this and you're keeping this in your mind and we're using right speech, you have these supports before you decide to go into action. And the action happens mental, physical, and uh, I'm sorry, yeah, mental, verbal, and physical action. And you're looking at, you're also looking at harmonious movement of mind's attention. Yeah, okay. And this attention, this, this movement of mind's attention becomes refined and it reflects the body language and it reflects what's in your mind. It reflects the view that you have towards everything. So, you know, in listening to some of the monks who were talking in one of the monastic discussions online, and they were saying, this, this right view caused such changes in your life. I know that it caused a tremendous change in my life. And it, it did in several other people talked about stories where it changed things in our lives because we never had this kind of structure to work with before. 
we may have lived in religions before uh, where we were commanded certain this and certain that, but when we looked at uh, the, the Eightfold Path and the precepts, we never had a set of advice to test before. And when we started testing how everything is working, it, it seems to be an interwoven system to me. And so this right action, this uh, harmonious movement of mind's attention is supported by these things happening also. And then uh, the reason this is important with mind's attention is because everything is flowing from mind. We take that as one of the laws of this whole thing. Mind is the forerunner of all states. And so we say, okay, that's why this is all important. The next one comes is, um, he used to say right livelihood here. But I agree with Bhante that uh, this, this is definitely important that you stay away from wrong uh, livelihoods such as um, poison or um, selling the flesh or um, killing with war, war equipment and building uh, weapons and things, weapons and poison and, and that sort of thing. That's definitely going to be something you're not going to get involved in. If you were balancing all of this up here, you're not going to be getting involved in there. But extending this one out, when you look at it, we take it to harmonious lifestyle. And so our lifestyle is going to be in a guidance, within the guidance framework that's happening up here with a positive attitude and perspective attitude, the perspective that the person has, the view, they take at life. They are, are looking towards the potential good and looking at things through gratitude instead of constantly talking and worrying about what isn't. They are grateful for what is and they can still work towards what should be um, for everyone in more balance, definitely. The, this right livelihood and right lifestyle, lifestyle assures proper livelihood, actually. Right, harmonious lifestyle assures proper profession, to say that way, a proper profession. That's in keeping with your precepts to support you. That's all you're trying to do. And that it's the best thing for you is to, is to have that type of a lifestyle that is helping others as well as yourself. And we have discussion, these uh, the people I'm working with here are not young girls. These people are, many are in their thirties and are coming into uh, ordination in this uh, uh, system that they're working with. And, um, and so they've had a lot of experience and they can understand and what we're teaching very, very well. I'm actually where I <laughs> ended up this week was in a, in a Franciscan, uh, Catholic Franciscan monastery, a convent that is a location for the preparation of 30 women that are going to be going into being full-time nuns in the Franciscan nuns worldwide and and these women uh, have been working six or seven years in preparation towards this and developing their own skills after going through college for different professions and made their decision that they wanted to come into this system for the rest of their life so they'll be assigned all over the world and be teaching loving kindness and the way that we're teaching it. And they're so thrilled with being able to learn this practice, to learn how to reach deep personal prayer for them, for, to help people at the sick and to help people uh, in every way that they'll be working around the world. So now this one, this one, the next one is the, the right livelihood and lifestyle. So the lifestyle we're talking about, how is your house set up? Is it set up to support you? 
um, in your pursuit of your practice and everything. And do these things help you above here? Do they help you in how you decide to set up your lifestyle so that you can practice these things all the time and not be in a situ caught in a situation, a living situation where you don't have space for yourself at all? It's important. Next one is right effort. We all know about this one. And we change this to a harmonious practice. And we change it to a harmonious practice. Uh, we want to use all the time. And I like to teach this basically this way. Uh, the moment that you recognize something's pulling you away in life from what you should be doing and concentrating on as you're focusing on what you're doing, you simply notice, you simply say, never mind, never mind this. Tell your mind that, never mind this and let go. Relax. And smile. Come back. And repeat as needed. I've taken to saying lately, you know, never mind, let this go. Relax, smile, and come back. I simply can't remember that word, release it. <laughs> they, they like to just tell that mind, never mind this. Let it go, relax, smile, come back. And that practice, if we keep it going, it helps us to go deeper and deeper and deeper down in our in our meditation. That's what this leads to, this practice, okay? And then this, the next one we go uh, is, we were always saying right mindfulness. But we changed that one to harmonious practice. Oh, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry, harmonious observation, right? Observation. But we're not staying just at the general level of observation outside in our life. And we're not staying at the level of observation um, of what we're actually doing just at that level. Either we're going one level higher or deeper, however you wanna think of it. And we're watching very closely the observation of the movement of mind's attention. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And so this observation, mindfulness is this skilled practice skilled practice of watching phenomena arise and then disappear and noting how we get personally, noticing how the operation of it is so we get personally involved with it, watching how it pulls us away from being in the present time. That's the danger of it. Yeah, and how to escape from it, which is going back up here, the escape and doing this again. Let's do this again. This is the escape from the suffering right there again. Last one is directed at right concentration. So the speech supports the action, the livelihood or lifestyle 
supports you to be able to practice right effort all the time. That's what this is. This one here is supporting you to be able to practice your, your right effort all the time and, and practice it deeply, have that place where you can go to be by yourself in your life style of living. Then your right harmonious observation, your, your practice itself is allowing you, is the, is the reason why you can have the deep observation, this practice here, okay? So the right effort, it supports the harmonious observation of the movement of mind's attention and the right concentration it's supported by the observation because whatever is going on, this is harmonious collectedness. What do we mean? Well, when we say harmonious collectedness, we are talking about refined Productive, level of concentration. I'm just gonna put a C there, of concentration, okay? Collectedness is a refined productive level of concentration. What do I mean that it's a balanced productive form of concentration? Well, because it, it's productive if the concentration level supports you to reach path and travel down the path. It, it must allow you to watch all the phenomena arise, exist, and pass away. And that helps you to escape suffering. So when you're watching this and you see how this is working, I just want to know what you think about this. I want to know if you think that this is, um, do you see the supportive nature and the necessity? Do you see, I guess the question is this, do you see that if someone were to say that this right effort, right view, okay, right view this way, if that is established and fully operational in the person, that that person can go all the way to Nibbana because this one is supporting these to happen. All these would happen too. My position on this is all these have to happen. That, that when somebody says something like, if I, if I establish right view, I can go all the way to the highest level of Nibbana. But do I understand what that means when I say that? And this is one of the sort of crash and burn points in Buddhism right now, is that when we hear the instructions, do we really understand what they mean? And how could we gauge whether they were true, they were, we understand them or not, according to the text themselves is basically, do those instructions fulfill the description of carrying out the instructions and reaching the levels of success? And do those instructions, are they, are they working for you? And if they're not, it doesn't mean you throw away the book or you rewrite it a different way and pretend that's what somebody meant before you reread it very carefully and see, could it have meant this a little bit different here and a little bit different over here? And if you changed that, would things work the way that the Buddha told Ananda what good and bad meditation was? And he basically was saying to Ananda, good meditation takes you to the noble path and you go down it easily to reach Nibbana. Bad meditation does not. And that was all he wanted to say about it. So if you had forcing him to say, 
good or bad. That's the only thing we could ever find that he said. And to me, I understand that as operational for you and successfully helping you to reduce suffering and, and gradually become more powerful in each one of these parts of the Eightfold Path is growing stronger and stronger or not. That's the way I look at it. So you know where I'm coming from, okay? So I come back. Whoops, that was good, huh? Okay. Well, I didn't mean to do that. I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> That's not the way. <laughs> really funny. Okay, I'm coming back to you. Oh, I thought I was coming back to you. <laughs> I love this part. This is always fun. Stop the share and come back. There I am, I'm back. <laughs> so when you look at the list, I mean, it was fun because I taught this last night, I guess it was, and showed them on the board how this might work. And they all went away, these girls, and they came back tonight and said, yep, that's the way it works. Yeah, because it's all intertwined. But like I said, we're, we're listening to the statement in the, in the Pachi Sambhidamada. And now see, the Pachi Sambhidamada, they say, the, the, they want to say that Sariputra was the author of, uh, this is what I heard, that Sariputra was the author for the Pachi Sambhidamada, and that statement came from there. But I'm not sure I, I still understand where this came from because I can't find it in other places in there. So the, the question I'm asking you is, you, do you see how the right view of everything, if you have that, you have something really solid to, to work from where all the other pieces are affected? Do you see it? That's what I'm wondering about. Yeah. I, I have a comment to make. Yeah. Uh, the uh, right view takes uh, some time to establish. So you can intellectually have a right view, but uh, experientially to, uh, to, for it to establish takes time. And therefore, it, there may be a, 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 a vicious circle rather than uh, just a one-way street. That is what I uh, would like to mention. So it's, uh, it's, you know, the mindfulness, right effort, uh, right collectedness, that leads to right view also in turn. That's right. So it's like a two-way street, a two-way yes. street. Yes. Those are yes. supporting, that's right. Um, that's why I think, I think the way they say this appeared in the Pachi Sambhidamaga was dangerous because by saying right view, the person says, well, all I need is the right view and everything will be fine. It'll all work. But you're absolutely right that from the bottom up, these things develop and strengthen right view. Yes. I was looking at it from the opposite direction, but you're absolutely correct. Absolutely yeah. correct. And, and so uh, my own experience uh, has uh, proven that to be the case that, you know, it's when I learned the TWIM method and uh, developed my uh, collectedness, that is the time that the view uh, started to change to, uh, towards the right view. And still, uh, it's not always that way, but uh, the effort is towards that way. And do you think that the, because you know what these things are has made this big difference in, in um, potentially um, reaching that point because you because you understand what each one is it helps you right exactly yeah 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 i think you're dead on you're just if you, right uh, there. if, you, if, if uh, intellectually if you're stuck on having the right view first then you will not make progress well i don't think that um i, I don't i agree with you um, I, that's why I think it's disturbed. I think what happens is when, when we try to present right view at the top, uh, people can run away thinking she's saying all we need is right view. Mm. I think that all these pieces in the Eightfold Path were part of the structure of right view, exactly what you're saying. So if we were going to correct this, if I was going to correct it, you know, here, 
with what we did, we would take um, and move this over. <laughs> okay, and I can't get up there anymore, but I can fix it. I can't uh, because I don't know how to get that down again. <laughs> That's funny. Um, no, no, maybe there it is. Okay. Now, if I went over here and I took a red one, I would say that the fact is what you're saying is this is what's happening is that these are all parts and parcel is actually the parcel is right view, but these are all part of right view. These have to all be operating correctly for this to change permanently. And I totally agree with you because this, what this is, this harmonious perspective, it is establishing an impersonal attitude, a more positive light, okay? And eliminating unwholesome negativity on the other side, going to the positive and strong and that can't come into being there permanently in the person unless right view has all the components in place and so these it's like a um how did we say that they're conjoined it's conjoined it's a conjoined um this whole thing would be called, I would call this, um, how can I do it? Okay, here, maybe oh, here. Oh. This is a conjoined thing, this whole thing, conjoined. Yeah, I, uh, instead of uh, a linear fashion, uh, if we put it in a circular fashion, maybe that will be a better representation. I think you're what? right. Yeah. I think Mata, you're right. I yeah. think, I think they're, they're both, they're all interconnected. So if we practice right livelihood, if we practice right speech, if we, you know, if we are mindful, we have good concentration. And then, you know, it goes to right view. When we have the right view, again, the speech that comes out, the livelihood, we cannot, we cannot uh, use unfair means. We cannot use uh, false, wrongful means to earn our livelihood. So I think they're all interconnected. Each one feeds on each other. I think that's excellent. That's excellent. And I, I can slip back to the cake with this too. We have to use the proper ingredients. We can't skip any ingredients in the cake and we can't change the, the brand of the cake ingredients. We have to have them all in the right proportions operating together. And I have always seen this not as a problem uh, of disconnection. I've always seen it as something that had to be an interwoven cloth within the Dhamma cloth, an interwoven section. It can't be, you know, they teach this divided into uh, the last three uh, would be um, divided into down here would be the, um, the practice, the Samadhi here would be the practice, these guys down at the bottom. And then, um, which it uh, Bhante Dhamma Gavesi, which is at the top uh, two, is it? The division at three. Is he there? Yeah. I need I need Newton here. You have these three are the samadhi division, where which is your practice of the meditation part. Yes, uh, I can hear you. Can you can you tell us what the other two divisions of the right? The, the path are the eightfold path. I have the samadhi at the bottom. I think he's got problems. I think action, I think this action and livelihood, I think are like this, two, two pieces here. And then I think these three up here. But this is not saying that they're not dependent on each other. It's just showing you what they're pointing to, really. So when you look at the bottom, it's the practice, the observation, and the collectedness, the balanced concentration. When you look here, the livelihood is the, the lifestyle and the um, they're, they're in terms of right action in life. 
but in our case, we talk about the movement of mind's attention leads to the action. We want you to be able to watch internally the movement of your mind's attention determines your action is the way Bunty looked at that. And then speech and, and um, uh, thought, speech and thought and viewpoint are, are the other piece. I'm sorry, this one goes up, wait a minute. Oh, right, okay, this one goes up here. One, two, three, like that, okay? And this one. But I think that Barak's uh, comment on this whole thing was really good because turning around the arrows makes it so that you understand that all of these have to be activated and coming together in order for you to accept the idea of everything is impersonal in nature and there's a harmonious perspective or view of, is the, is the picture of how everything's working together. I think he's absolutely right. Yeah. Anybody else have comments? Hmm? Sarah, what are you thinking? <laughs> oh, yeah, just listening. And I, I really like the, um, the circle idea and the, the flowing between things. And I, I feel that's quite encouraging um, as well, because personally for me, I have to work on my right view. <laughs> huh? is, yeah it's, it's not very harmonious and so in certain places and it then means that we can feel a sense of reassurance that there there are all the other areas that can support us in, in moving towards this harmonious view so i i like i like the circularity and I like the, the confluence and the weaving you've described between them. I think it's really, it's really helpful that we can look at things from different, um, different, different starting points and, and it all interconnects. So we actually, actually with this could take, uh, that's one of the reasons it ends up in the wheel is my opinion, I think because in the wheel, the Dhamma Chakra wheel containing the Eightfold Path and it doesn't end up in a linear list. So if we were to make this, this wheel, the wheel can break at any point. The, world, the wheel can be strong by the way we build a wheel. So why don't we try that? Let's see. What time is it? I don't know what time it is. <laughs> I lost time completely. Somebody has to tell me what time it is because I have no watch. <laughs> Right now, I don't know what happened to that. I don't know what happened to it. Getting fascinated here, I can't find it. Of course, that's normal. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna try something. Let's turn it into a wheel and see how we feel about it. So here we go. Be brave, Sister Kama. I know you can do this. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, I forgot I had a pen. <laughs> this is funny. All right, so. Whoop, that wasn't going to work. I knew that. I, I knew that. Just a second. <laughs> okay, try again. Go over here, right? Da, 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 da. Wait a minute, here. I don't know how you do this. 
No, I didn't know how to do that. I'll have to learn how to do that next week. All right, stop again. Here we go. And now we're going to do it. We're just not going to fool around with this. We're going to, uh oh, I lost something. What did I lose? <laughs> this is great. No, I see. Here we go. Let's, there we go. Okay. Here. Well, it must have been somebody who did this before. I guess they thought the same thing. So I'm gonna do it with the harmonious parts um, or should we do it with the right part or both of them? What do you think? I don't know. So we have view, we've got perspective, and then we have thoughts, which are images, mind images. And then we have speech, but we like to say communication, because we communicate in a lot of different ways. Then you say action, but we also say it starts with movement of mind's attention. Just keep picky. Then it says life, um, mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the first one? Oh yeah, livelihood, yeah. It says livelihood. And we say lifestyle. And then over here, we say effort. And we say practice. And this one up here, mindfulness. And we pin it down and we say observation. Skilled observation. And then mindfulness, we go up to concentration. And we say, collected mind, collected. Collected mind. Let me make this better like that. And it gives it a little bit of a wheel. And we make a turn around. Good. 
Here it goes. It's turning. There it goes. Okay. So you feel better when it's like this. It looks like it's not going to favor any one thing. I think I like it too. I think I like it because it's not favoring any one piece when you put it into the wheel. You can't get away with saying there's a top or a bottom. And some people, when I teach, are having trouble with one part, but not another part. So when you get to know them and you're working with them, you're counseling with them and stuff, you might need a lifestyle adjustment or they might need a little less stress in the practice. Now, what I'm seeing here, I've never experienced before because um, they just come in the first day for interviews yesterday, and this is the second day only. And when they walk in, basically, I mean, some of them had tears in their eyes. They've been working for years to do deep centering prayer, but they couldn't do it because why? Because all of a sudden a nun comes in who says, you know, it doesn't have to be that serious and lighten up and start smiling when you're sitting. And suddenly they're dropping in deeper and clearer and they're working with their tasks and their chores more easily. And they come in today and saying, I'm not, my mind's not going all around anymore when I'm writing all in one or two days. And all that we said was, hey, what if you don't take this quite so seriously and you smile when you do it and you're sharing and we're talking a lot about when you are giving to others, giving in your profession, that's when you get the most back for yourself. Funny thing, what goes around comes around. <laughs> what goes out comes back. And so this is not a mystery so much anymore. And all 15 of them, so sweet. And from all over India, they are here. This is really fun. So that's what's happening. Anybody got any questions about it? Yeah? Hmm? No questions. Like I said, I don't know what time it is because I can't figure out what I just did with the, with the, um, I don't know what I did with the, um, that's what I don't know. That's <laughs> really funny. So somebody has to tell me what time it is. Hold on. Give my, you have my, no, you don't have my. I can't find my, yeah, that light. I can't find my thing I have in my hand all the time. <laughs> My phone. Okay. So I'm going to let you go. Does anybody have any questions? Has this been an hour? Has it? <laughs> you know what time it is? Uh, for Bunty? 7.30. 7.30. Really? Oh, wow. So we did it for an hour. That's amazing. I should celebrate too. My mind must be getting clearer too. Walking around in a convent this week. <laughs> Very good. So tell me, what do you know where it is? Okay. Anybody questions? No? Steve, did this work out okay for you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Sister Kema. Okay. Purgati, how are you doing? Good, Sister Kema. You understand okay? Yes? Yes, yes, Sister Kima. Okay. So if any of you have any questions, just get in touch and we'll figure out a way to answer. <laughs> okay? okay? So everybody, let's say um, a prayer. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fear be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas, a mighty power share this merit of ours. 
And may they all join and protect this Buddhist dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the bell is up the stairs in the hall. <laughs> I hope you all have a really good week and keep smiling. It really makes life easier. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.